Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. I hope you are doing fine. My name is Dr. Nancy Miles Bafford GP. Dr. Miles for short. I'm a senior lecturer, the Department of Philosophy and Classics. Philosophy to be specific. And currently the coordinator of UGRC 150, that is University of Ghana required course. 150. 150 is critical thinking and practical reasoning, which is a university-wide thought course, not your regular departmental course. And so it is done by all students admitted into the University of Ghana. It's a first semester, first year course. Uh, I said first semester, first year course expected to be taken at your first year, that is so uh, relatively for main campus. <coughs> you take uh, half of the students take it the first semester, then the other half take it the second semester. They alternate between UDRC 150 and UDRC 110, which is coordinated by another person. Both are required for all students of the University of Ghana. That's for main campus. For city campus students, I think the arrangement with your know, campus is to do it during the second semester and then rather do a UGRC 110 in the first semester. Currently, I'm speaking January 2024 now. Okay, such arrangements may, may vary in the future, but for now, it, this works fine. So, city campus students who will read this, there is a content that I want you to have. That one is true for all times until changed, okay, on how to navigate Sakai, which is the virtual platform that you have to get used to. And that is why I'm doing this again, targeting current students of the first semester of 2023, 2024. Level 100's first semester is now in January 2024 for University of Ghana, okay. So distance students, and when I say that those who belong to those campuses understand. So if you, you don't understand distance, it means you're a main campus student or perhaps a city campus student. Work that way is targeted to distance student. You are taking uh, a UGRC 150 for the first semester. Okay. City campus student will take it during the second semester for your campus. Main campus students all students admitted to University of Ghana Freshers should take note of this uh, announcement on how to navigate Sakai, okay? You will need it if you have registered for UGRC 150 now, main campus student, College of Health Science, College of Fulte. You will need it for now. If you haven't registered for it now also, you will need it for next semester, that second semester, when you must do it. Okay, so what, are the key things. We'll be sending you recordings like this. In my capacity as the coordinator of the course, we have to coordinate it. I am a lecturer fully teaching the content, but also working as the one coordinating UGRC 150 uh, with a team of other lecturers like myself, okay? So the information is to help you access content on the course, understand how it is done. I've shared an earlier one, but this one should be targeted enough to get people enrolled quickly on Sakai and then catch up if they have it. So I told you earlier, and I want to say it again, if you want to go to Sakai, Sakai just means your, your regular classroom that you should have in the lecture hall, but it is online. It is not a physical room that you enter into now, okay? So when we say go to Sakai, we are talking about go to your lecture hall online, that's all. That's okay. How do you do that? I'm projecting something on your screen now. You may want to look if you're able to. Okay. So you Google www.ug.edu.gh as if you were searching for something. Just put this link website. Eh? I'm trying to get you to the University of Ghana website that is beautifully projected now. How do you do that? Go to Google the search engine and type inside it www.ug that's university of ghana eh? dot edu education mm, dot 
gh ghana that's all www.ug.edu.gh and hit the enter it will bring you to this beautiful interface of ours currently mm -hmm. now when you get there scroll all the way down and find sakai lms on the featured links you can find it down here or you can find it under the featured links the featured links are to your look at this is the featured links these are very accessible you have to get conversant with this platform okay I'm talking about the website for your own sake it's university of ghana's authorized web website okay so we go to sakai lms sakai learning management system lms that is it and click on it when you do it will take you to a page that i should share now for you to see then you key in your details. So let me stop sharing the home page and take you to what you see when you select Sakai LMS. It will bring you here. I'm using a laptop, so the presentation, how you see it may vary slightly if you were using a, a smart gadget phone or something. I'm using a laptop, but it's all well and good. So let me, this is what you will see when you go there. Currently, I'm projecting my page. So you see username and you see password. Look here. Yeah. You keep, your username will be your student ID. I was keeping my staff number. That's my identity number. Then your password will be your PIN. We've given those details to you. It's private to you. Keep it. I have mine also. Staff. So I put it in there now. Okay. And I log in for senior members, I should say. Okay. And I log in. And there am I. You get into Sakai Street. Now, when I log in, look at the top right corner here. This this is called sites. They are like lecture rooms in the lecture in the lecture building. So on campus, for example, if you go to NNB, New End Block, that has three lecture rooms there. The lecture center or lecture hall building is called NNB. But inside you have NNB one, NNB two, NNB three. If you go to JQB. Quarter building towards the entrance, that big building at the entrance there. That building is a lecture hall called what? J JQB. But inside JQB are different rooms. So you will find room 22, room 23, room 9, room 14, some are upstairs, some are downstairs. It's the same thing. This is your lecture hall. The lecture building at the side. So see, at sites, when you select this, it will show you the different rooms that you will find that lecture hall or lecture building and for i'm a lecturer i teach all these okay so you see i have pscl 201 that's philosophy and classics for the 200 first semester i you see uh what is the other one Phil 301 level 300 some are main campus some are city campus uh, you see level 400, some are uh, masters, some, you know, etc. You will see your four or three or whatever number of courses you are doing if you properly registered for them. Sakai only pulls the data from the uh, registration platform that you were given. If you don't register into a course, it will not show on Sakai. You are not a legitimate member to find a room where the lectures are ongoing. It is registered student, properly registered student you have done your academic registration that get enrolled onto Sakai like this it's automatic the system just updates itself and pulls you into the Sakai platform it's not any lecture that enrolls you if I do that it's dangerous for you it means your the university may not recognize you as a, re a re registered student. just like a banana seller excuse me you know on campus can enter a lecture hall and sit up if she's properly dressed you even if she's what is properly dressed you you wouldn't know. So far, she doesn't come with a banana into the whole day. How will you know whether she's a properly registered student or not? So anyone can enter into Sakai if we allow them to. And the university may not recognize you. So I don't manually enroll people on Sakai. I don't. I don't add your ID to the list of students on Sakai because you tell me, oh, please, eh, eh, don't put me. No, I don't. You can ask all the because it is not good for you. So you get your registration properly done and the system will pull you directly into Sakai. You will see the courses that you are properly registered into listed here. So if it is UGRC 150 and I'm targeting a distance student now, because main campus should have more than enough information on how to navigate Sakai. But it's still useful to you if you found the recording. 
uh, please go to this. So for D people, you will see UGRC 150, 30. You will see all the other UGRC 150s there. I am teaching all of them. I'm coordinating all of them. So I see if this is for main campus. It's UGRC 151. This is UGRC 153. That is College of Health Science. This is UGRC 150, 30. That's the stats students. UGRC 154 will be uh, city campus. So just for you to understand, you will see UGRC 150, 30. S1 is first semester of the 2023-2024 academic year. If you're a distance student, okay, that is what you select. If you don't select this course, the specific course you want to go into. So if it was your philosophy or sociology or cons, whatever that you wanted to go into to find some information or some eye that has been opened, then you go to that specific course site. These are the sites, SITS, the rooms, the lecture building. Okay, a specific room at JQB that your specific class is ongoing. Because remember, when you go to room 22 at JQB, some other course may be using room 14. The whole building is not yours. So when you come to Sakai like this, you would have to find a specific course that you are going to do something on its site. And so for our purposes, you will go to UGRC 150 and select it like this. And that's what I've done. Now look attentively and rely on authorized information for your own sake. I shared links. When I share links, I post it to your Sakai and copy your emails. If they have been activated, you should get a prompt. But even if they are not activated, go to the site and find. Don't go depending on some political students that are trying to get a following because they want, they have some political ambitions. It's fine, but sometimes they mislead you. They give you links that are not. Maybe they are using that last year's link or something. The course is managed because we are dealing with thousands and thousands of students that must be served well by a team of instructors, lecturers. Okay, not my course that I'm handling alone, having my targeted students who hear my voice or once in a while may even see me at the lecture hall. This course is not handled that way. The UGRCs are university-wide, so simple obedience. And where you have a, a concern, you have been given an email address. I want to project it here again. If you go to all the announcements I sent, I put it there for UGRC 150 currently, the coordination. Put it here, I'm very prompt there, and it tells me that this is a UGRC matter. Sometimes I hear one, two, three, I read one, two, three queries or concerns or clarification, then I notice that this one, I have to address it generally. Then I send a general announcement to the course site. That can reach 4,000 students at a go. See that? That is better than you are using links that I don't know where you got them from, and you are frustrated. Okay, so that was just to, to show you, go to the course site. This course is mainly online taught for distance education. For main campus, we have introductory sessions in person and then the uh, end session also in person. We cannot ask you to come from all your centers, you see that, to come for a physical lecture or, and all that. So with time, I think, but for now, solely online taught, then we, try to also record the content and, and even add to it and it'd be very interactive. So you have to be, how uh, do uh, uh, put it, take advantage of these opportunities at interacting at your convenience. You may be at the hospital, you know, at post. Two hours of your time there, a colleague can fill in for you and make sure our, our patients are taken care of. Then you'll find some space in the consulting room somewhere switch on your laptop and engage content, full lecture. You see benefit when you finish, you, you pause and your colleague can now go home. She took two hours of your time and, and stood in for you. You are able to, you don't have to drive all the way from your post or immigration judge or something. Just to come and sit at a, it's a distance program. So we want to give you, you know, an effective tutelage online, but you have to help yourself with information that comes to you so that you get, authorized one and that is where you get it you see so this is the sakaya now and i move on look at the tools when i tell you go to the two go to site info go to resource two go to this these are the tools they are tools on sakai that help you so let me view as a student so that you see the way you see it i am a lecturer so some of the things may present like a lecturer will see 
Now, if you go to the left here, this is two. And I'm projecting D, distance education, your side. So you see that you have sessions, session one, session two, session, session three, session four, session. Each session gives you a summation of what the lecture, the lecture will be like. Okay, so lecture one, lecture two, lecture three. The same thing is placed at your resource tool. Look at the resource tool. This is the resource tool. This, if you click it inside, you see lecture slides, notes, that is eh, arranged, and then it's interactive. At the activities there, they help you to navigate the content at resource two. Maybe I should select it for you to see. So that is resource two, Look, lecture one. Lecture two, lecture three, lecture four, lecture five, lecture six, lecture seven, and lecture eight. You are going to, you are required to have eight tutorial sessions. We call them tutorial sessions when we are dealing with distance education students because it is not a lecture as in latte, come and sit in. No, we, we engage you so that you can feel free. So it's a tutor, lecturer, excuse me, tutor, student kind of engagement that's why you would have to have done a lot of the engagement of content before you meet your instructor the lecturer or the tutor you see that you have to do that look at as at lecture excuse me the content you need for lecture eight is already posted there you're very fine everything is there teaching links i just updated it to include one colleague who uh, worked on his thing look at this teaching links the links you will use when we start teaching is there even some previously recorded lectures on the content. And I've shared, I think, lecture one and two, which some of you, so you can be busy. You may be, you know, I don't know the kinds of things. You're nursing mother, frying the fish, and you still have your earphone on, connected to your smartphone at your back pocket there. And you're listening to a taught a subject of scrutiny, declaratives, imperatives, what have you, or, uh, you know, equivocation. You can be listening in ahead of coming to engage it. So when we meet, it is interaction on the content. That is why we put them there. You don't enter class as a distance education student, especially all other campuses, yes, but more especially for distance education students. You don't enter the class to hear the content for the first time. No, that's a wrong posture for a University of Ghana required course that expects you to get at least D for Daniel or better. If you don't get at least D, you can't graduate. It's not the same for the other courses you do. An E, which is a weak pass, can go for other courses, not for UGRCs. Critical thinking, the one I'm engaging you on, UGRC 150, no academic writing and the others. You cannot pass. You can't graduate. You can't go with anything below D for Danny. And D is 50 over 100, 50%, eh? half. So if you get 49, it's a reset. That is what it means so that uh, people who have the right psyche and, and the, the posture, you search for the thing and you search for it at the right sources. And where you have issues, you, you send an email. The emails are helpful for us, for, especially for me, for this course, because I'm able to reference it later if it was something about your registration or what have you, that even though it is not my job, but I think I know who can help you. I'm able to get the person, forward your mail to the person. So I got this from one of your students. Can you check a way to help them with this? this because that is how you work. Eh? And we are very prompt, very, very prompt on that. 12 midnight, I responded to emails. So you don't get stranded. OK, so these are all at your resource to lecture one right now. Yesterday, uh, we should have started your distance education engagement. But we are expecting over 3,000 students approximately checking it against last year. And we, we, we didn't have, as of yesterday, uh, yesterday was Saturday, okay, so as of maybe Friday evening, we had just about 400 people enrolled on Sakai. The challenge is not with regist registering for the people are just all over the place, students. <laughs> so you have to be patient and help people get in. As of this morning, when I checked that 800 and something, telling you that it's just a matter of let them settle in. That is why, I sent you a notice, so let's go to announcement two now. Still exploring how to navigate Sakai. See, we are still at resource two. So we want to go back to the tools and find the announcement two. How do you find the tools? Go through the overview is here. The sessions are just content that have been summarized for you for you to easily access it. That is the announcement two. 
which must be your friend. Announcement to resource to site info. They are your best friends <laughs> on the on the society. Now see this first announcement that you see here, this was posted by your academic unit because UGRC 150 done in the first semester will be done by all admitted students of distance education, you see. So when they want an information that is going to all of you at once, look at the date, October 27th, you are not even in school yet. This is January 2024, okay? But the, the site, the classroom, the lecture hall eh, was created already. So this notice came from your academic affairs unit targeting students ahead of time. Now see, relevant information for these students, watch. This is January 17, 2024, still from your academic unit. I want you to take note of that. Now, this one, welcome. Join a UGRC 150 group at site info. It's for myself. And when you when you view, you will see it comes with the one who sent the message your tenancy miles back for It doesn't matter much. So far as the information is relevant to you, you will. But this timetable scheduling and all the other things there were for everybody, every course. So you saw cons, what are because they are targeting the they are students that have been admitted in. Now that school has reopened, no academic units notice will come through UGRC 150 sites because it gets confusing for the student. They don't know whether the notice coming is for everybody in the course of UGRC 150. So you see a cons, whatever student, some student be asking for IT on platforms that have been created for UGRC 150. So that confusion stops now. School has reopened. I sent you this. Why I, I speak for the team? I coordinate the course. So I speak I as Nancy Miles, the free doctor. <laughs> okay, a lecturer in my own capacity. But at this stage, acting as the one coordinating information flow for enrolled students of the course. I cannot speak to everybody who is not in the course yet. Some may get admission and not take it. See that. So when you enter the site, I give you a welcome. See, join a UGRC 150 group at site info. This was sent January 23. What did it say? Let's open it and see. It says, welcome to University of Ghana and to the University of Ghana required course, UGRC 150. Welcome. Join a group at site info. Look at that. Join a group at site info here on Sakai for our online lectures from first week of February. The original start time for lectures for D as communicated by academic offices from 27th. Any eight weeks from 27th to April. From 27th to sometime in April, it's about 12 weeks. Choose any eight weeks of those because we can't go beyond eight weeks. That's the instruction, unless there is an arrangement or something for that, okay? So we want to start, we, we the teaching team, want to start at least from the first week of February when we hope that most of you would have enrolled on Sakai because the course is online taught. If we start teaching when only about 30% uh, <laughs> or so of you are on the side, you will lose a good number of the students will lose out. That is why, okay? So we want to start by the first week of February and I gave a specific day and time in subsequent announcements so that you are, you are sure of the time, okay? And then you don't miss out. Every notice comes with specific, look at it, specific day, time and lecture at the site info there, where we say you should go and join a group for this course, UGRC 150, not for ICT, not for all the other ones that people are asking me. I'm reacting in giving you clarification. I'm reacting to some concerns and questions that you can tell that the people asking are confused, which is okay. The first week or so is like that when students come in. But the second semester, even though they are students are fresh, they won't have too many of the queries because they will understand the system now, okay? So I'm just going beyond myself to give you those informations. Use authorized channels. I keep saying, if you are not sure, go to your admissions desk. It's better than say, oh, they said that the link is here. So they go and say that you sit in three weeks, four weeks before you realize that you are at information studies. When you you are supposed to be so and so, please see that they might go against you. So let's work that way. This notice came to me, uh, came to you with clear instructions. Choose the specific time, 
day at site info that you want. We don't want to impose it on you. Then you come and say, oh, the, the time they gave us for group one is this. We didn't give any time because we are not targeting, we are not working with one specific, we should the same like other departmental courses. That is all I have tried to ex explain. Okay, so that is announcement. When we go to site info, still navigating Sakai, back to announcement. So that announce announcement that welcomed you and told you to join site info is here. Then I send this one, January 24th. At 6 57 a.m. What was inside that? That is what I have shared on the, the platforms that I work on. It's the same information. I've gone to the whole uh, site for every group. So you can share it to your colleagues in the other groups if they still haven't seen it. I said, Dear UGRC 150 students, engage the content below together with the lecture slides at your resource. Too. Now you understand the slides, the notes. They are at your resource too. So engage, this is a recording. When you play it and you still want to re reference again, the slides, they are there. Okay, take your questions to your lecture and tutorial times of clarification when we start our tutorial sessions. Look at this one said from the 5th of February. You see that this is updated because we are looking at the number of students there. That is why you have to rely on announcement. Now see, these links, the lecture one, is a recording from previous semester that but the content on the lecture unit hasn't changed much so it can still be beneficial to you put it there so that those who are on the side don't get short change because others haven't found their way there and as at this morning saturday excuse me today sunday morning i've checked there are over 800 now so we can do our first week lecture so the 800 can't be asked to wait again because we are still waiting for maybe 2,000 plus people to come. Hopefully by Monday morning, people will be a bit more settled in and they will enroll on Sakai and join us. Okay? Even while they haven't enrolled on Sakai, if we have our WhatsApp platforms created like we have done now, they are authorized ones, not the ones everybody is doing it. I keep saying people, people are very exuberant, trying to exploit and some trying to help, I think maybe. But the information must come from the people who will examine you and grade you. You see that? I want you to be minded. Before you hear, oh, they say, come and buy a book here. Go and do that. And the person saying that is not authorized to do that. That information is not even true. And you wouldn't know. So you go to the course site here on Sakai Read Announcement. If you are still not sure, I've given you an email to work with. Those two links there, which you will see on your platforms, if you don't see, they go to Sakai, like I've done now. I'm going to share this recording to all the, the folks again, groups, your emails, your whatever, and, and engage it so that you at least have content that you're munching on whilst you wait to receive. Uh, and then the last announcement, which was earlier sent, but I had to update it. Updated is what you see there. It says, the WhatsApp platform for UGRC 150 quick start thinking. I say that content is good for everyone, but you see that my target is on distance education students. So this is it. Look at it. Authorize the WhatsApp links for EGIC 154 first semester. See groups one, three, seven, and ten that I directly am able to save you on at this. Each group we are hoping does not exceed 200 people. That's what we hope so that you, we can have a meaningful interactive time with you. Okay. So where there were excesses when we finished and there were still some num numbers actually then, you know, if you are leading, then you have to take up more of the task. So I have four different groups now, one, three, seven, and 10. Look at uh, Dr. Steven and Cancer Morgan is on the team. Fully flex lecturer of the course as well, T taking groups five and nine. Look at, where is the confusion? And there, is, there shouldn't be any confusion if people are just reading. So if you selected group five at site info, Join the group five WhatsApp link to help you receive prompts, and then you can, oh maybe the lecturer wants to meet you ten minutes earlier than something. What, what do you think? Oh, this coming weekend we may have this. There was a holiday, so let's discuss what is the alternative. Then the WhatsApp platform is is easier to allow for such quick information. Then what is settled on is posted for you there on Sakai. You see, that is the essence of this. I think we have for all the groups now. I'm still working out. Uh, I want to get a, a feedback from Group Six, Dr. Annie, and then we'll be all set. 
even as we speak, I don't think there's any registered student for So those are the announcements. Look, still helping you see how to navigate Sakai. You see that? Back to our tools. We don't have any other announcements. So now we go to site info. And I wish I can view as a student. I want to view as a hand. There, there it is. Let me view as a student so that you will see it the way a student would see what I'm projecting for, for site info. Now, when you go to site info, site info just means like the names like the information on the site. That's all. It is also one of the tools. Okay. Okay. It's one of the tools there. So let's go to site info now. Look at that. You know resources now. This is assignment two. If I tell you I put the the uh, an assignment for you to do, this is where you go to. If it is a test and a quiz, the timed assessment, it will be here. Test and quizzes. Okay, this is grade book where you check your result. If I tell you I've released your result for so and so, you go to grade book and you find it there. Okay, we don't use the chat room, and there's a reason. It gets filled up in no time. You can't easily point to the one who said what and respond to. Look at the numbers we are dealing with. That's why we have given you the WhatsApp platforms that are authorized. Not some people's own, they pay this from or students own that. It says, come, come. Okay, I'm so and so. No. How will you know? Go to this site where we are now and pull the links from there. That's all. It will be coming with my signage. It will be coming from my email or a colleague's email, and they are all there. Okay, let's go. Now, this is site info finally. So we want to go into site info. I hope that this thing is not too lengthy, but it's useful for you. Look at your site info. When you come there, I scrolled down. Watch what I'm doing. This is it. And this is how you will see it. I'm not showing it as a lecturer. Or staff. I'm viewing like a student. So this is how you will see. Go to groups you can join. Look at this site info down here. Groups you can join. See, it comes with all the details, every detail. So, group 13, group 17, who is look at 5 30 p.m. to 7 30 p.m. It is when Sunday, who is the instructor, Mr. Edwin Ezra, one of the fine tutors we have. Look at this, Mr. McDonald, Mr. Seche, Friday, which group is that group 17, group 9, Monday 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., Dr. Seven Cancer Morgan, group 1, Saturday 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Dr. Nancy Miles, Rafa Jimfi, yours truly, myself speaking to you. I am the only female on the team currently for the, even for main campus too, I think. So if anybody is, I don't, I don't know how else to say. Look at this, Dr. Richmond Kwesi, uh, Saturday 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. There are two. So if this one fills up and you, you feel that, oh, no, 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 I still want it. Don't say, no, please, there's Saturday. There's an alternative. Uh, if you more. Reverend Aaron uh, Kubag, eh? Kubag at uh, Group 18 is Saturday, 3.30 to 5.30. So most of you haven't filled in. I'm, told, I'm telling you that if you go to uh, participants now, we are over 800. And yet those who have signed up to belong to a group are just a little over uh, 300 or so. Even those who are already on the site, having joined the site, their groupings, and it is not good for you. I presuppose that people just don't know. That's why I'm doing this. Or they know, but they think that, oh, before I say I am, I'm taking the course. No, this is an investing-wide course. Enter a group. Maybe you enter the group, and then later on, you realize that the time crashes or something. I have allowed for unjoining and rejoining for some time until we settle in nicely. When we do then I lock that up, then you belong there. Now, even if we lock it up and you later on find out because of a field project or some change in itinerary in the office, because we, we know that the student may have work as well and school and whatever. Don't let it worry you at all. Just attend the lecture time that fits your schedule, even if you joined another group. That is, if it happens, so don't, it will not go against you yeah, because we set our assessments in a standard mode. The assessments are open to the whole site, regardless of group. The system randomizes to everybody, whether you're in group A or a group one or group 10 or group 1,000, doesn't matter. When we are setting assessments or grading 
or content, because the content is accessible to all of you, regardless of you. That is how we organize critical thinking. Okay. So that you don't feel shortchanged. That a group, we didn't do this one or we did this one. No. The content is there for everyone. But the groupings help us to manage the classroom interaction so that we don't have one group having 800 students, another group having 52 students. How do you address all the concerns of 800 students if they raise their hands in two hours when another group has only 50 something? And everyone on the team is competent enough to engage you. There are senior lecturers on the team, hmm? lecturers, assistant lecturers, tutors. So understand that, that, that we have our competencies. That is not in doubt. So the grouping is only to, to cut everything to chunks and help us be able to manage. Okay, look at this group, for example. It's only one person that has uh, enrolled. Look at, uh, let me show you another one. There's one, there's not, look at uh, group 18. Nobody has even signed up for it. Maybe the time is not convenient or people didn't know, they will now go and check. But some also have, group one, for example, has 135 students out of the 200. So you can't keep them waiting forever and ever because you want others to come. So by the third, of February onwards, we will start teaching, targeting those who are in at the time. Maybe they will join and later, they'll join the lecture time and later sign up for the group. I don't know what the issues are, but I'm just helping you with information. Okay, so that was site info, as you can see it. If you go to your session one, for example, that is where you see your lecture one. This is what you will see. You will know what the learning outcomes of the topic one are. Look at the, the slides, they are also at your resource too. It's, it's already there. You engage it. And the recording for lecture one that I shared to you at announcement two is here. It's based on this content. So if by now, if I ask you declarative and how it varies from interrogative and how interrogative is also different from sentence fragment or whatever, you should know that. You should be able to tell me how to distinguish a factual statement from a value judgment. When we engage, then I put flesh to it. But you will know the skeleton. That's distance education. Okay, self thought and self engaging, and then we help you to understand. The same with uh, session two and so on and so forth. So I think that I can hold on for now. In case you want to send an email, maybe I add that. Go through your tools again. That is the email, not email archival, but there's a tool called email now, this one. If you select it, it will take you here. So you see that it comes with my full details. Nancy Miles, back for you. Okay. This is this email is the default one that UG gives us. You see, it has my UG dot. Okay. So when I'm sending you an email, I'll go here. I want to send to a specific person. I go to rules. If the person is an instructor, instructor means lecturer or someone teaching. Okay. I could, I could select that and it will show me all the instructors that are listed in the course. Okay. Then I choose the specific one I want to send the message to and do that. If it's not to an instructor, but to a specific, specific student that I know by name or something, you won't get the person's email, but you get the person's name or details. So you, you select that and then the information will go to that person directly. So that is for a student. In case I want to send the notice to a specific group, you are not authorized to send notices to groups. If you are caught, it's a street sack. It's wrong information if you are not an instructor, unless you have the authorization to do this. I want people to, to be disciplined. In a course that is handled online, people are somewhere tamale. You give wrong information and frustrate them. So we will not permit you to do that. If your group instructor, the, my colleague lecture tells you that send a notice to so-and-so person, make sure you are they, We don't even do that, but maybe there's an emergency of a kind. There are tutors, there are lecturers, there are, if you're a class rep, better use the WhatsApp platform so that it's targeted to your group, see that. But I'm teaching you how to find your way around. So suppose you were sending a notice to group 10 or something, then you select this. So it will go to only group 10. Not that you send, please, what time is our class today? They send it to the whole site. People send it here. Everybody from administrator to lecturer to group 10 to group 1000 receives. What is your problem? <laughs> Okay, sometimes your personal information that you shouldn't send out there, you do that. Okay, so if that is also done, after you, you select the target group, then you type in your information in the text box down there, see that? It 
there is something to attach, then you attach that and then you send your email. Sometimes you want a copy of the email yourself. So you, you select here to tell the setup, send me a copy of what I'm saying so that I can reference it later or something. If not, that is how you send an email also. So I want to cancel the process because I don't intend to send any. Okay. Please take note of the official uh, offending uh, email I have given you for coordinating and responding promptly to your UGRC 150 queries. It is not the one that is default in the system. The default one is what you see when I send messages to you because that is what Sakai has put you. But I have created one since I've started using, I've been using, sorry, since I think whatever, yeah, to, to some years back that I took over this task. I use it promptly. It helps us reference, like I said. So that email address you find at your overview tool. Let us go to overview quickly. That's the first tool you see when you go to Sakai. Where are the tools? Still viewing as a student. Okay. So when you go, this is overview. The very first one at the top, before syllabus, before session one, and what the overview tool has your course outline. This course is solely online taught for distance education students. Okay. Now, okay. So my name here, I'm a senior lecturer of the department. I've said all that. The School of Arts, College of Humanities, University of Ghana. My contact email for coordinating and responding to queries and dealing with UGRC 150 matters for all campuses is Nancy Miles, UGRC 150 at gmail.com. Okay. Nancy. Miles is with a Y. If you send it with an I and tell me I've sent you an email, I've sent plenty of emails, you're not responding. It's up to you. It hasn't got into me. Nancy Miles, UGRC150 at gmail.com. We work very hard at response. As at this moment, I think I've just seen four emails or so that I've not responded to yet because I want to finish this. That's the course outline. Okay, Department of Distance Education, because that's my target. But you see that it is tweaked a bit to, to, uh, to, to serve main campus as well. Okay. Those are my details there. Then now as a, the instructors see, our details are then with, our tut with the tutors as well. Okay. Dr. Morgan, so can say, Dr. Emmanuel Adi, Dr. Richmond Kwesi, Mr. Edwin Ezwa, Look at the names are all there. Mr. Peter E.J., Mr. Pakwe Kupansa, Mr. Abraham Lincoln Lutiga, Mr. Seth Donata, Mr. McDonnell, Nessa Siche, Reverend Aaron Post. Okay, with your story. All these with our emails are legitimate sanctioned members of the team. Engage the course description. It is for you, it's information for you to understand what the course is about, what the goal is. When Ghanaians play their football, wanted them to score goals. What is the target? After everything is done, what is the goal? Okay, and then what are the objectives? What are we using to get to the goal? Dribbling, what tactics, what formation are we playing? Two, two. <laughs> so the target is to get the Bangu and Ugo student. That's a meal. But what processes are we using? Are we, are we going to, you know, so the objectives are the means and ways to get to the target, hmm? the measurable ones. Planning out can see what do we want you to have attained or what do we want to come out of the learning? That is where we examine you from. You should be able to differentiate, you should be able to distinguish deduction from deduction. You should be able to identify and pick out polemical ploys, uh, rhetorical tricks, eh? when people are trying to manipulate you by the language or they are tweaking, they are diverting your attention to something else in the bid to persuade you. You have to be a critical mind. And you have to reason practically. We engage. Look at the lecture one already. It should give you some good content there. How is the course delivered? Look at this there. This is at an over, overview tool. It's a guy to settle you in. So when we enter, we should have gone lecture one. See, but we have to help people see what is already there. So we are doing that online assessments. Everything online. Don't think online means you do it unsupervised. For your final exam, we are, 
it will be likely use answer booklet and write at the centers because we have to ensure that you are the person doing the work so that our degrees have integrity and you can be accountable for what you claim you have learned. Okay, we are confident that you will do that. So it's weekly lectures online, but we just have eight sessions together. Always remember that that is what the, your unit requires us to do. It's not because we can do 12 or we can do six or something. There are rules that are guided. If you have questions, then you ask us D. Okay, that's that one is for D. Okay, assessment and grading, two continuous assessment essays. You do two continuous assessment essays, each hour 10 marks. Then you do the interim assessment. That one is worth 30 marks. Then you do the final exam, which is worth 50 marks in that order. So totaling 100%. Okay. Always make sure you have a strong and stable internet to do that. We don't like copied work plagiarism. Take someone's idea and say it's yours. It gives you a straight zero. Ask your predecessors, they'll tell you. And we can catch you. So let it be a required text, a soft version. We'll find, we'll, we'll put a soft version kind of the required test there for you so you can easily assess content. This is a schedule and plan of work. So lecture one, thought as object of scrutiny, what I've shared with you there. By the time we go back to that content to go through again from the third on, you will see that you are well texted in this. Lecture two is on definitions, making meaning to a target group. So you want, to be, you want to be a good marketer, you have to know your target group that you are sending information to. It's a critical thinking skill. That is why we don't care the course you are doing. You have to receive training in how to think critically about the content subject matter and how to reason practically about it. You might, you might be doing psychology. How to present, how to uh, you know, diagnose what the problem could be. It's a critical thinking thing. It is not necessarily the content. And that's why the investor requires everyone to do it. Okay. And types of discourse, deduction versus induction. These are all topics that we will engage a bit more substantively in our sessions. I hope that this navigation of Sakai content will be beneficial to you with announcement to and joining site info. So when you see this, you can help your colleague, fresh student of the main campus uh, who is currently taking the course or might take it next semester to get themselves refreshed and abreast with it. Okay, so we start our interactions from the 3rd of February. I think the 3rd of February, the date is, um, let me just confirm that. So that we'll be good to go. Okay, almost done. The 3rd of February is, today is 28, Sunday, 28, January, 2024. So 3rd of February, uh -huh. It's a, a Saturday and Sunday next week. All right. So that we start at the weekend. Normally, you, you would have had only weekend sessions, but we got a prompt from your unit that they will appreciate it if we can do some weekday evenings because they are workers. So you will see that we don't reference only weekends because there are weekdays as well. But we'll start from the 3rd of February, which is today is Sunday, coming Saturday. And then we'll work continuously in eight weeks to take you through the section slides, session slides we have prepared for you against the course outline and the detailing we have put there. Thank you very much. This has been Dr. Nancy Miles, Barford MP, a senior lecturer, at the Department of Philosophy and Classics, which hosts University of Ghana required course 150. That is critical thinking and practical reasoning. I spoke as the coordinator of the course on behalf of the team of lecturers and tutors that are serving distance education, on behalf of the team of lecturers and teaching assistants that are serving main campus currently for this first semester. Hopefully same team or with one or two additions will serve the second semester where we will we'll be focused on the second half of main campus students and city campus students. I wish you all the best. Send your queries if you have any. We wish you 
a jolly, jolly ride through our critical thinking menu. All the best.